I want to speak to you about how I escaped some glass ceilings. How we collectively are trapped in some and why I want us to breach them. My first cry on this planet coincided with the storming of Havana by Fidel Castro and his comrades, 12 years after my country became independent, 11 years after Gandhiji was murdered, 14 years after the most dreadful bombs were detonated to end a world war. I was shaped in the 20th century by its global and local currents, a century that saw two world wars, a Great Depression, Cold War, arms race, national liberation movements, decolonization, clash of ideologies, contests between economic philosophies, Asian resurgence, emergence of third world, dreams of equality and end of exploitation, counterculture, student unrest. I told you all this to bring to the foreground important historical currents that held sway when I cut my teeth and grew up into my adulthood. If I were to make a word cloud from the dominant public discourse then, it would consist of these words. Socialism, peace, new world order, public sector, green revolution, five-year plans, Vietnam, non-alignment, cold war, imperialism, revolution, Noxalbury, Beatles, North-South dialogue, South-South cooperation, technology transfer, aid, third world, kudita. My notions about glass ceilings were inseparable from the discourses these words captured. I never heard of this expression glass ceiling during my formative years, but when I look back, I feel I probably had a vague sense of it, but in plural a multiplicity of glass ceilings. I will talk about them to start with. I was born in a free country, unlike my parents. They saw a glass ceiling break and India becoming independent. I came in after it's broken. I was born in the womb of a mother who was not an untouchable, not a tribal, not a forest dweller, nor a religious minority. So I escaped the glass ceilings that held millions of people down. I was born in an urban area. So escaped the glass ceiling that held down about 85% of the population then living in villages. There was no illiteracy or educational glass ceiling that held me down. My parents, grandparents, uncles and aunts were not part of 88% of Indians who were illiterate at the dawn of independence. I did not die, evidently. As an infant, as 165 out of every 1,000 infants died around that time I was born. I belonged to a family that was not rich, but not poor either. Therefore, had not been under a glass ceiling along with about 80% of others of my age who were poor. I went to primary school, then to a high school, and on to a college and to a university. Escaping the glass ceiling that held 52% down who did not go to primary school, 59% who did not go to upper primary school, 56% who did not go to secondary school, and 65% who did not see the inside of a college. I even went abroad to a premier institution of higher learning. I could have personally had all these glass ceilings holding me down. But I escaped them all. Ah, forgot to mention, I escaped the toughest glass ceilings of all. I'm not a female. All these glass ceilings I escaped effortlessly. Therefore, the ceilings that mattered to me then and matter to me today are my country's glass ceilings. Glass ceilings of Southern Hemisphere, of the developing world, of an economy that is a latecomer into the game of development of a land occupied and exploited by a foreign power for two centuries, of a colonized mind, of a wounded soul, and of an alien tongue in which I speak to you now. The formation of my person took no notice of individual ceilings, nor did it see opportunities solely as an individual's opportunities. 
that was the creed of the years when I grew up. Nobody ever asked us, where do you see yourself in the next five or ten years? When I learned that interviewers ask this question nowadays to judge if you are ambitious enough to qualify for a job, I was dismayed. For most of us, upward mobility and forward progression was not a sharply defined, exclusive, individual, private goal, not understood as a race that required us to jump over hurdles and smash ceilings to emerge on the other side. We were not in competition. Scoring 60 or 65 percent of marks in an exam was celebrated, believe you me. 98 to 99 percent was not our glass ceiling. We did not go to one coaching center in order to get admission in another coaching institute. There were rich people in the world and in my country. Fords, Rockefellers, Tatas, Birlas, but they were not our icons. We did not look up to them for inspiration as achievers. They were not our demigods, much less our role models. Young people looked up to Gandhiji, Tolstoy, Martin Luther King, Nehru, Tagore, Mandela, Radhakrishnan, Bose, Prakasham, Alluri. Sacrifice was revered. Intellect was worshipped, not riches, not living up to their ideals did not depress us, like not making it in life makes us feel inadequate and a loser today. We went to school to learn, to hospital when we got sick. We saw them as places of learning and healing, not as service providers, making profits and measuring customer satisfaction. Schools and colleges did not compete with each other. They did not poach students and teachers from each other. Hospitals and schools were not swanky brands. I am not flying off the handle as some of you perhaps are beginning to suspect. I don't belong to the school that feels world was better in the past during my younger days. No. I never fell into that trap. Let me explain why I said all that I have said. I said all this in order for us to assemble at a new point of departure, to persuade you to interrogate the current fundamentals of development and progress of nations, societies, communities, and individuals. Like you, I also want to see my country, India, break the glass ceiling and become a developed country. But what does a developed India look like? Today, in the imagination of most of us, it should look like America, Europe, Singapore, have skyscrapers, huge shopping areas, highways, cars, men and women in business suits, living in urban areas, consuming what an American or a European consumes. Live like them, eat like them, work like them, drive like them, dress like them, spend leisure like them, consume culture like them, play like them. Our homes should look like theirs, Our offices like their offices, classrooms like their classrooms. In one word, Aspire for what they have. Anything that doesn't match with that is backward, under the glass ceiling. That imagination dominates our minds, wittingly or unwittingly, articulated or unarticulated. We all want to break that glass ceiling and reach that level to arrive. But should we? It has been becoming clear for many years now that that is not the way forward for the world. Studies show that if every country consumes like America does, lives like America, we will need five Earths to support that lifestyle. But this pale blue dot is the only place we have. Let's not forget Gandhiji's warning. 
the world has enough for everyone's need, but not everyone's greed. Our air is polluted, oceans are rising, rivers and water bodies are filled with filth when not drying up. Our forests are depleting, biological diversity is shrinking, temperatures rising, making our planet uninhabitable for us and other creatures. All in the name of progress, this path is unsustainable. This kind of development is leading to disaster much faster than we currently suspect. This model also resulted in unacceptable levels of inequality in the world and extreme concentration of wealth in the hands of a few. 50% of the world's wealth is owned by 1% of people. The bottom 90% of the adult population owns just 15%, while top 10% holds 85%. Dig a bit deeper, 97% of world's wealth is held by 30%. India is no exception. 50% of India's bottom rung holds a mere 2.8% of the national wealth. Our richest 1% holds 45.2% of our wealth. Oxfam research recently revealed that top 10% of our population holds 74.3% of our national wealth. This is not development, not progress. This is disempowerment, dehumanization. So we need to redefine growth, development, progress, liberating ourselves from the tyranny of outdated definitions of backwardness, evil stereotypes of progress as consumption, and eternal race towards those unreal goals, defined by flawed imagination of the glass ceilings that nations will have to break. Rejecting those false glass ceilings is the first step. Breaching them conceptually is our new task. For us as humanity, as a nation, as a people, as a community, as individuals, to move towards a new development paradigm, construct a new future, not merely a sustainable one, but a regenerative one, is our calling. Thank you.